All right. Um, Tim Atkinson, welcome. Thank you. Um, you've been with working with night as an IC for six, the past six months, but previously you were a company driver. Yep. So you've kind of ran the gamut of, you know, from starting as a company driver, um, going through that for, for a few years and then now independent contractor yep. and, that's why I want to talk to you today. Yeah, as the okay. director of the independent contractor program here at night, um, came across your YouTube video. Yeah, and immediately, I was blown away by the level of organization and professionalism you take, and and not only professionalism but um, seriousness you take in your own business and sure. where you're taking your business and what your goals are and where you want to be. So. That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, okay. I think first things first is uh, when you signed on, being from San Manuel, Arizona, yeah. was the first thing that caught my eye. Right. San Manuel, for people who don't know, was small mining community, and not many people are from there. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw that immediately whenever you uh, put your lease information in and uh, kind of went from there. So, you know... Let's talk about it. Let's, let's t tell me about your, your, your journey to trucking tonight, um, what that was like before, and then leading up to where you are now. Sure. So um, uh, before, before trucking, uh, I uh, was in the military. So I was a uh, communication officer in the Marine Corps. So I was a certified computer geek in the Marine Corps, basically. Um, I got my commission through NROTC at uh, Oregon State University and then got commissioned uh, Joined the Marine Corps, became an officer, got my uh, 0602 communication officer, that's the designation, and then did four years there and got out in 2014 um, and then got out. And then after I got out, went back to college, um, was just hanging around, just taking some time off. So I was living in Las Vegas, Nevada at the time. So was doing that, you know, kind of liking it, kind of not but going back to college. You know, you, you get out of the military and you're like, all right, what do I do now? Um, so I was doing that and then I did that, you know, I was going to college and I was also Uber driving, uh, in Las Vegas, you know, just in the off time, I'm like, all right, just, you know, what, how a lot of guys get into it, just, uh, uh, you know, picking people up and hauling them around, uh, Las Vegas. I'm like, oh, okay, I don't mind this, uh, this whole driving thing. Yeah. Um, so I was doing that and then of course I did that for like a few years, uh, Excuse me, I think I said I got out in 2014. It was 2018 I got out, correction. So it was 2018 I got out of the, Mar uh, the Marine Corps. Um, and then got out. I was doing that for a couple of years. And then, of course, COVID-19. Everything shuts down. So, you know, the strip was bare. There was nothing there. Um, there was no Uber driving. There was no college. There was nothing. So I was just sort of like, you know. And at this point, trucking still not in your mind yet. Well, see, that's the thing. It kind of was. Okay. Yeah, so like I was, when I was, uh, you know, doing the Uber driving, I'm like, hey, maybe I should try you know, maybe truck driving better because, like, I, I did like the driving portion of the Ubering, but I didn't like the traffic portion, you know, nearly as much. And it's like, hey, if I was just on the open road, that might be a lot better. Um, so I was thinking about doing that, and then, you know, uh, the pandemic occurred, and then I was like, well, geez, I'm just sitting here, you know, just twiddling my thumbs. So I did that, you know, I was just sitting there for, like, like, like six months or something. You know, everything was shut down. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, so finally I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot. So uh, I was trying to find a, a, a uh, company that had a terminal in Las Vegas. And there were a few. And, uh, you know, I was just looking at them, and I just ran across night transportation, had a terminal in Vegas. So I'm like, all right, you know, let's, that's convenient. You know, so let's, uh, let's do that. So I applied, and then, um, you know, I applied to them. Uh, they said, you know, yes, right away. And uh, I went to their school. So I went to the night transportation school uh, here in Phoenix. Okay. So I got my CDL through night transportation, and then I think it was like a few years ago. This was at this point, I got it in. So pandemic was when was it? Pandemic? Nineteen twenty. Yeah. End of nineteen. Early yeah, 20. end of nineteen. So I think I got my. So yeah, I hung around, just kind of waiting for the pandemic to get over, and then I went into trucking. So I think I went to the school in I think October of twenty twenty is when I. So then I went to the night transportation CDL school, got my CDL license through night transportation. And then of course, you know, they hired me right on right after that. And that's, uh, that's when I started trucking. Awesome. And then at what point 
were you in the business and saying, okay, I want to make this my business instead of, you know, Knight's business? <laughs> sure, sure. So, you know, you, I got in and then I drove for, I think about three months, right? And I was, uh, you know, I drove for about three months or so and it was extremely stressful. It, like it, your first three months are just going to suck. Like there's no other way to put it. Like they are going, your first three months are going to be extremely difficult. So after that three months, I took, like I stopped driving for a while and I just like, whew, all right, let's, 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 uh, you know, uh, reset, reset here. So, but, and then at that time, the, uh, the country started opening up back up again. So like, um, college was back open, everything was back open. But so I stopped driving for about three or four months or something like that. And actually re-signed up for classes. And I went back to, you know, just uh, hang out in Vegas again. Um, just unwinding and figure out, okay, do I want to do that or not? Do I want to truck drive or not? And I did that for, I think it was like three months, four months, something like that. And then um, after that time, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back, you know. So I got back into a truck, uh, started driving again. And so at this point, you know, I had about three months of experience. And after that break there, uh, I actually went and worked for another company for a little while. Uh, GP Transco was the other company. Uh, they ran the Midwest. Uh, I didn't like running the Midwest, though, because I'm from the, the, uh, you know, the West Coast, and all my friends and family are on the West Coast. So I was doing that for a little bit, and I did that for, I think, six months. So started driving, went for about three months, took, I think, like five months off or something like that. Went back tonight for about, I think, another three months. No, actually, it was six months. It was closer to six months. Then I went to GP Transco, and then I was running with them, and they were okay. And then but I just didn't like the routes. So I decided, you know, I'm going to come back to night transportation. And it was at this point where I was like, I think I'm going to make a go at this. And that's when, okay, I'm going to go back to night transportation and I'm going to try their lease operator program, the lease purchase program. And that was really when I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make a go of uh, owning my own truck, starting my yeah. own business. Sort of thing. Yeah. So. And now we're six months into it and you're about to own it. Yep. In a week or two. Yep. I plan <laughs> on, uh, I'm going to purchase it. Uh, actually might purchase it maybe tomorrow actually. So uh, depending on how the timeline goes. So, uh, um, but yeah, I awesome. to purchase it. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. That that's amazing. Um, when you got into the program, you know, you, you say, okay, I'm going to pair with Knight. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to lease through them, join, join their, their opera owner operator program, obviously. What was your, initial experience with that uh, starting the, the yeah the, from the time you said okay I'm gonna I'm gonna make a run at this I'm going to now get in touch with the the, the, the leasing specialist sure and, and and from then to, to where we're at now what, what was that experience like uh, it was good uh, when I got into the lease purchase program it was a terrible market and there's a huge part of shortage so you know I applied and then I had the experience and the timeline and all that stuff. Uh, so I applied and I had to wait quite a bit. I think I, between the time I applied for the, to get into a truck to when I actually was in a truck was four months. So it was a little slow because there was a lot of the part shortage was severe at this time. Mm -hmm. um, so now, now it's not nearly as bad. Um, but so I applied and then four months later, uh, I got into a truck. In the meantime though, I was, you know, in that four month time period, I was just sort of looking at, different trucks and figuring things out. Um, but uh, it was, I mean, it was relatively smooth because I just, you know, I was still company driving. Mm -hmm. So I was just a company driver and I was still just running. And the market was really bad anyway at that time period. So I wasn't in a big hurry to get into a truck right away. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. You just apply. And if you have the qualifications and, you know, everything is good, uh, you get in and then you start looking for a truck. Um, yeah. If you're going to apply right now, it'll be a lot I would, it should be a lot faster than when I applied because just because, uh, you know, the pandemic occurred, there was a huge part shortage. There was a huge, huge like mechanic shortage. So it just took a while for me to get in. But I think if you apply now, it, it should be a lot. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll yeah. be a lot faster than what I had to do. That was kind of a, a one time thing. So. In, inventory's gotten a lot better yeah, since then. So, um, so you, now you have the truck. You're about to start this journey as an independent contractor. Feelings of nervousness or uh, yeah, a little bit. Apprehension, I mean, a little bit. I mean, uh, there was no like when I was leasing. There, were, there really wasn't any nervousness because 
you can always turn the truck back in. So if something went wrong with the truck, I could just turn it back in, right? So that was always a good feeling. Uh, the only nervousness right now is, okay, after I buy it, it's, it gets a little more, uh, <laughs> it's a lot more risk. Yeah. So that's certainly something to think about. Um, but that's the only real um, concern I have, I guess, yeah. after I buy it. Because I know, like, if something were to go wrong, like today, uh, y- you know, night can still, I'm still under the night umbrella. Yeah. And, you know, I could turn the truck back in slash, you know, there would be some, um, yeah, uh, uh, I could work with night to get yeah. it fixed. Uh, our, our program, I think, is built for guys to start their business. Sure. And, and, and build their business or grow it, right? It's built so a company driver like yourself, not only just a company, but somebody that came to our CDL school, which, right. you know, came to the CDL school, came to night CDL school, did the thing as a, as, as a company driver, even went elsewhere, mm. you know, and then came back um, and said, okay, I'm going to start. And now you're going to own it outright. It's built for that, that type of person. There's, there's no credit check. There's not really not a down sure. payment. You know, I don't even know if you were, 500 bucks, I think was your, probably your down payment, if yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and now you, you, you got a, a, a truck, a rig that's yours, that you've already driven, right? Uh, that you know the maintenance on and things like that. And our, our maintenance program is, is also built, like, sure, you know, as a, as a security for yourself, for, yeah. for that owner that doesn't have, you know, a fleet of five or six trucks that they can kind of pull from their own, you know, maintenance and things like that to, to keep their fleet going. <laughs> it's kind of yours your own truck, your, your own business and you're your own, but bi- you are one of, of one of your own fleet. Sure. And you know, your truck going down or something like that, you can always jump in a loaner and mm-hmm. you know, we, we try to help out as much as we can. We're not going to subsidize your business, but we're also right. not going to, we understand that you're leasing from us and we're going to do what we can to, to, uh, to help out in that sense of like, okay, you know, you got some, sec- some stability, so some, some securities, you know, a loaner truck and, the, the access to a lot of loads, you know, the buying power yep. for parts and things like that um, are all things that help the guy starting out, right? you know, that, that you may not have yet. Sure. Um, and even as an owner, as a true owner, you're still going to have some of those perks, right? You're still going to have the perks of, you know, shops and terminals throughout the country that you get to utilize. Um, the freight that, you know, even in a down market like it is now, you're not having to go battle for loads on a load board with, you know, 40 or 50 other guys that aren't part of night, you know, or, or part of the network in any way. So you're still going to have those. Yeah. You will be more on your own yeah. when it comes to cer- certain sure. things, but you're still going to have some, uh, securities and, and just help in that sense to, to keep your journey going along. And, and one day maybe you're going to own another truck sure, and another and another, yeah. maybe that's, is that an end goal for you or is it kind of just let me own this one out outright and see where it takes me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's on the, it's on the radar. Um, I'm, you know, just sort of taking it one step at a time. Okay. I got this one that's, you know, worked through this, uh, but potentially uh, owning a fleet. Um, that's, that's certainly on the table and it's something I'm certainly, uh, thinking about doing yeah. for, for right now. It's just one step at a time. Absolutely. Well, I know a few guys that are partnered with Knight that we could talk to. I can get you there. Sure. Your information because they did very similar to what you're doing. Right. Where it's like, okay, let me start with one. Okay, that was that one was one worked out. Let's get another. Yep. Okay, I got a buddy that that it's driving, and I can pay him a little more, whatever it may be, than the company that he's at, or you know, I trust him to drive my my truck. Sure. Uh, get another one, you know. So it works out works out really well. Um, let's talk the YouTube channel. Sure. Let's talk the YouTube channel because that's kind of what brought me. To, to you, other than being this from San Manuel, which, right, right. you know, minor pride on that one. Right, yeah. <laughs> nice town. Yes. Um, you know, the YouTube channel, very informative. Mm-hmm. Um, what was, when you started that, what was your your goal in that? It, when it came to what you wanted the channel to be, the information you wanted to provide, because I will tell you, it's very transparent. Mm-hmm. And I think you say that in almost every video. Right, yeah. It's all about transparency and your journey. And helping, I'm assuming others. Sure. Um, yeah. And being more of inform- an information channel than some even entertainment, but I think it's both. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, you know, when I was coming up, you hear all the bad things about a lease program and uh, you, you just hear it constantly. You, you know, it, it's a scam, it doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And I was always skeptical, right? And I'm like, okay, does it? Does it really, you know? Um, so, you know, I was trying to find information. I'm like, okay, what? 
like, what is it actually like? What What's the profit margins? What are, what's all this? And I couldn't find it. I just could not find it anywhere. I, w- I would find somebody who posts like a one-off video of like, hey, here's a fantastic paycheck where I drove 3,600 miles and my paycheck is $6,000. Okay, it's not realistic. Or it would be like a, a sob story where like, okay, yeah, I lost money this week. And I knew it wasn't, it, it was in between. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, you know what, I'm, I just can't find this information. So I'm like, I'm just going to post it. That, and that was basically what I did. I mean, I knew how to use Excel and all that good stuff. So I'm like, I'm just going to make an Excel sheet and I'm going to post all of my numbers as transparently as I can, uh, just to show here's what a lease operator actually makes. And here's what a truck driver makes Cause I did it as a company driver as well, showing what a company driver was. And then I, I'm doing it as a lease operator showing what a lease operator is, uh, makes, and I just compile all you know, my expenses, my revenue, and my net settlement every week and just in a big spreadsheet. And like, here you go. Here's all of the information you could possibly want at, in terms of the profit loss of a lease operator. And so far, it's going, it's going pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I've, as of this week, uh, it's 71 cents if you don't, per mile if you don't count the uh, lease security deposit, which I think it's fair to not count that. So, you know, about 70 cents per mile, and I'm paying off the truck. And, you know, getting the experience and waiting out this terrible market and have access to the terminals and I have access, you know, to the mechanic shops and all that stuff. So uh, that's what was my goal was just like, okay. Um, I was very skeptical that the lease programs were as bad as people were saying they were. Um, I mean, some of them probably are, you know, out there. There are probably definitely some uh, predatory lease programs out there. But I can tell you, night transportation is not one of them. And I, I brought the receipts because I show, um, you know, everything I'm making. Yeah. So I, I bring in the receipts. So. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. yeah, 71 cents a mile and an investment into a truck is, sure. that's huge. Yeah. You know, that's that's what you want. But I, I think what separates you from uh, others is your attention to not only detail. I think that's important, but you tr- you do treat it like a business. You know exactly what you're going to bring in every week or Maybe not to the penny, but right. yeah, I would say within the ne- within ten bucks, maybe pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Um, every week, and you you talk about that in your videos a lot. You that is so important uh, as an uh, the, as somebody that's been in the industry for for a while, um, but also working with independent contractors. I you know I was I, I worked with them at, at the terminal level, as, you know, helping them get loads and things like that, and, and being the, being there for them. Um, that is. Very, it's so important to know where you're going to be at next week. There, there's no sticker shock every week, right? Of like, oh my gosh, I ran, you know, like you said, 3,600 miles and I made this great paycheck, uh, this take home mm-hmm. paycheck. And the next week I only ran, you know, maybe it's not even running, but you only put in uh, 2,000 because that last load you did didn't empty out until a certain date and it didn't hit this settlement. Sure. And, you're kind of looking at like, where, where's all the money? I drove, you know, 3,000 miles again and I didn't get it. Okay, well, it didn't, it's not on this settlement, but it's on the next one. And right. knowing that and preparing for that is is key because now you're not playing uh, catch up all the time. You, right. you kind of know what's what's coming and that's important. Right. Um, your spreadsheet, you made that on your own. Yeah. And... Why do you feel that was important to have something like that? Uh, just to show transparency. Like, because I can, like, say, okay, hey, I made this much this week, and, you know, maybe just, like, write it on a piece of paper and then show the camera or something like that. But um, I wanted something that people could just, like, look at and then just, like, look, okay, there's all the data yeah. that, you know, um, is available. And, you know, obviously a spreadsheet is just, like, the best way of doing something oh, yeah. like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to make a spreadsheet and just here it is. And uh, make it as detailed as I possibly can. And just, here's all the numbers. And so a spreadsheet was just like, there was no question it would be a spreadsheet. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's that's what I did. So. Awesome. And keeping track of that weekly, um, I, I mean, obviously, that's going to help yourself out. You know, that helps that helps your business understand where you're at. And I, I was a former terminal manager here at night for Southern California. And it's very similar. What you have is not so different from what the terminal's receiving from accounting and, you know, all of everybody, you know, in the back office here that, that, you know, gets all the, compiles all the numbers. It's the same thing. It's your maintenance. It's your fuel. It's your revenue. It's your, um, 
going, what's going into your maintenance program, you know, right. and what you're getting out of that. It's your cost per mile. It is your revenue per mile and your fuel per mile. It's broken up the same way you have it. Um, so, and, and it's not rocket science, right? It's not, yeah, it's not <laughs> it's, that hard. It's, it's really not. It's how much money uh, am I bringing in versus how much money am I spending and how many miles am I doing that in and where is my break even point um, is kind of where you where you're at a lot of the time. Yep. Um, let go ahead. Yeah, no, I was gonna say um, when I was I should have mentioned this when I was in college in Las Vegas I was studying accounting. Oh, okay. So <laughs> yeah, I do have some experience with it, but if you don't need to go to college to study accounting, you just pick up an accounting book if you, know, you wanted to know more. Um, so you know, there's, there's that going on there. So I, I do have some accounting experience as well, but, uh, you could just pick up an accounting book if, yeah. if you need to know more about that. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. I, I think, like I said, it, it's so important for an owner to have that bookkeeping. Yeah. And whether it's, you have someone do it for you or you do it yourself, it's important to have some type of record Yeah, to know where you're at. You know, if you, if you're trying to live and do this thing week by week, you're going to have a hard time um, keeping keeping track and knowing where you're at and where you've been and how things are going and what needs to change because you're, you're not seeing it on paper. You're not seeing any trends. You're not seeing anything like that. There, There is, you know, benefit in, in bookkeeping that way and not just, okay, what I make this week is what I make. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of a, a way to go about it that's probably going to create more frustration than anything yeah because all you're seeing is you know two feet in front of you yeah you're not seeing the full the full picture yeah um let's talk a little little pain points for you mm-hmm. you know where where have you found that it doesn't have to necessarily be with night and and the whole the, the the lease program or anything like that just in general you know being in an ic or independent contractor or lease operator what has been one of the struggles you've had um well, getting into it, I mean, the, the biggest struggle right now is just the market. I mean, night is providing plenty of loads, but it's still it's still rough. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about it. I mean, everybody's feeling it. Yeah. Um, so the market's not good. I mean, fuel prices are high, but night gives you a fuel surcharge, so it's not it doesn't affect me too much. Mm-hmm. Um, so the market just being bad is a big one. Uh, coming into it, there were still lingering part shortages, and there continues to kind of be that. It's improved drastically from where it was like last year, but... Uh, the part shortage is getting, you know, it's getting better, but that's, that's a, that's a bit of an issue. And I think right now the biggest headache I have is though still maintenance. Um, uh, it, um, you know, it's just, you, you bring the truck in, right. And then this is, a, I guess, a critique of the night transportation maintenance um, program, I guess uh, you bring it in and then you turn it in and it, it's kind of like uh they'll do something to it and they'll do what you want, but then you'll get the charge like three weeks later. And it's like, I really wish you would have charged that right there. So that would be one of the critiques I would have. And I would say the maintenance is probably the biggest headache I'm dealing with right now. Um, but it's not too bad. I mean, it gets done in a reasonable time right now. My truck is currently in maintenance. You know, I figured I, yeah. you know, well, <laughs> okay, I got an interview. I'll turn it in and have a few things fixed. You know, I got a tire that's leaking a battery needs a replacement, a slow coolant leak. And, um, an ABS sensor that probably needs looked at. So um, I would say the biggest ma- uh, issue is maintenance, but I don't think that's necessarily particular tonight. You know, you, you got to turn the truck in, you got to wait for it to get fixed. Um, but uh, I, I would say the maintenance issues right okay. now are the biggest headache I'm dealing with. Just yeah, you know, it's still the truck runs fine, but you know, you got to turn it in, and it's just a time off really. That's kind of like yeah, you know, you turn it in, and then three days later it gets fixed, and it's like, you know, that, that was three days I just lost. But yeah, luckily I'll go home, but you know. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's that is that is your money maker, right? That, when it goes down, it's kind of a a it's a, it's it's a, it's a punch to the gut, really. Yeah, it's, you know that's that's the only one of like I said, it's the one of one right you know, that you got. Um, you know, first and, and a lot of your maintenance issues are I, I think are are common. You yeah. know, things that we hear, um, and you know, getting those those. ROs closed out for you in a timely manner is obviously something that we got to do better at, mm-hmm. you know, as, as, as of the night side of things. Um, but yeah, but for everybody, the, the market is tough. Yeah. For everyone, the market is tough. And it's not just, again, it's not tonight. It's an industry thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
and it's kind of a weather the storm type of thing. And how yeah. long are we going to weather the storm? You know, yeah, it's it's tough. Um, but I think we're we've we've hit rock bottom, I guess, as an industry. I would agree. <laughs> yeah. So I guess there's only up from here. Yeah. It's just how long are we going to be? Yeah. <laughs> how, how bad is it going to be? Yeah. And I'll say you know if right now it's a perfect time to work for you know a big company like night because there's they do have solid freight yeah um so you know and you're paid by the mile and you get a fuel surcharge so fuel doesn't affect you too much no matter what the price is and the the, the price of the spot market doesn't affect you too much because you're you're paid a flat rate so yeah it's a pretty good time to work for a company like that. yeah I, I would agree I, I think that uh talking with you know new new ICs that come into it or guys that are just frustrated with you know what the rate may be mm. um I think that's you, you bring a little levity to it when you start talking like, okay, well, you know, the, when the spot market's great, yeah, it's great to own yeah. your truck. Yeah. It's great to go and, and get that, get the money whenever it's not where it needs to be. Being paid by the mile is, is where you want to be. Right. Yeah. You know, you, you look at it. Uh, I use the, the, the California, the just LA to Phoenix, you know, analogy, a load from LA to Phoenix is going to pay a thousand dollars. Load from Phoenix to LA is going to pay four hundred dollars, yeah. or or those aren't exact numbers, sure, but yeah, it's yeah. just that's the drastic difference in those loads, and that's when you're paid at a percentage mm-hmm. of of something or a spot market rate. That's that's really kind of yeah. how it goes down. And are you when the market is low now that margin is yeah it just shrinks. Shrink. It just shrinks. It's yeah. not a six hundred dollar margin. It's a okay that load that used to pay a thousand out of LA now pays. 700 or five, 600 and the load out of Phoenix going to LA that used to pay, you know, 400 now pays 350. Yep. It didn't move that much. Cause that's always been the case. Yeah. It's the other way. Yeah. Around. Shorter load. Yeah. You know, so now you're like, Oh, well when I was making this, this money in the spot market, it, it's different. So we are seeing some guys come back, you know, with their trucks that, you know, they, they, they went and got, the, they got the money when it was out there yeah. and now it's time to make sense. And it's time to come back. And now it's, how do we retain that 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 those guys working with us and however that that may be we we gotta we gotta fix that part of it but whenever that spot market goes it's it's great for the owner mm-hmm. and that's the investment you're making as a lease operator right you're leasing you're you're not it's not a get rich quick type of thing it's you know invest in your your equipment um, it's an investment in in your business you know owning the equipment maintaining the equipment. Uh, doing what you can there, and then whenever you, you should construct when the when the iron's hot, and and it, it's and and even at seventy one cents take home, that's still yeah. Not, <laughs> it's I still mean, not bad. Pe- a lot of guys are going bankrupt right now. Yeah. So like, okay, whatever. It's it's all good, you know. Um, and it you know if you're coming into the industry and you're thinking about you know you want to own a truck, um, it's a good way to just get your feet wet. Yeah. So you know, I think people have unrealistic expectations sometimes going into a lease program or whatever. They just come in and like, all right, I'm going to make one hundred fifty thousand dollars per year. And, and you're not going to like, it's, it's just not how it works. Right. I yeah. mean, it's like, if, it's just like any job, right. If you come into it, uh, unless it's like, you know, you're like a petroleum engineer or something <laughs> like that, you know, you're going to have to, you know, learn the ropes, get some experience. And then, you know, it goes up from there Yeah, and this is the perfect way to do so. So, yeah, I, I would agree. I think, I think, like I said, the program we built is for that, that company driver, getting into the, the owner operator program mm-hmm. and figuring themselves out in that sense, you right. know, what kind, what do they want their business to look like? Do they want to be somebody that is, you know, going to build a fleet or are they the, the, the lone ranger type of guy who's just, Hey, I just want to own my truck and drive, own it. And when I own it, you know, then I want to, you know, it's going to, when I own it, I can now take, have three day weekends. Sure. Because yeah. I own it now. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's what I want. That's what I'm striving for. Yep. I want to be home at more, more often. And, and that's my, my way of doing that. What does that look like for everybody? Right. You know, is, is different. So I think it's important to, to have that mindset, that vision of, okay, this is, this is what I, I, I want it to be. Right. Or, or at least, and it's always going to change. Yeah. It's always going to change uh, as you get into it. Mm. The, we talked a little pain points, you know, you know, maintenance is, is a, Something that, like you said, is always going to be there. Um, again, now let's talk things that you've you've either surprised you in a, in a great way or, or that you kind of knew was going to be there. 
just about owning your truck. Um, what do you, what is your, you know, what are you liking about it the most? It doesn't have to, again, it doesn't have to be with the night lease purchase program, the owner operator program. It could just be like, okay, I, I'm leasing my truck and this is, this is great because. Yeah. Um, well, I think I already kind of listed the things that are great. Like just getting some experience is, you know, that's a good one. Um, waiting out the bad market and, um, uh, you know, stuff like that. Just the general, just the experience really is like the biggest point that I'm like, okay, you know, maintenance could take you three days when you turn the truck in. Okay. Fair enough. You know, just learning about stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I'd say that was, that's the biggest one. Just getting the experience, uh, as like a, as a lease operator moving into an owner operator position. That's, uh, that's the biggest one and the opportunity to own a truck. Right. Yeah. So I was able to test drive the vehicle, which is huge. Like, cause you know, if you go to a, you go to a dealership, you, know, you do the due diligence, due diligence on a truck, drive it off the lot, 300 miles, it blows up. Oh, you're in a bad way, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's a real problem. But, uh, so I would say just the, the biggest gold point, the, you know, good cookie, whatever you want to call it, uh, about leasing is just getting that experience, test driving a vehicle and then buying it outright mm-hmm. uh, here, uh, here shortly, um, is, you know, that, that's by far the biggest advantage you'll find, um, leasing a truck. You know, yeah. You, you come into it, there's no credit check, you know, there's nothing that, so you can hop right into it more or less and, um, test drive it, make sure it's good and buy it, and then you're good. So that is the biggest one. Like as far as like, you know, the trucking, it, it, there hasn't been too much of a change in, in terms of like when I went from company driver to a lease operator, uh, I kept the same, uh, driver manager, um, you know, and I'm just driving around a truck that, you know, I'm making the payments and a lot of it is taken care of as far as like the fees and whatnot. It's not like you're having to like, you know, write a check and then mail it out to, to night every week. So as far as the, like the logistics and admin of it, yeah, it all pretty much stayed the same. Like I kept my same fuel card. Yeah. It just kind of transferred over into, uh, like a, uh, a lease, lease operator yeah. an independent contractor account basically. Yeah. Um, so not a whole lot changed as far as that front front goes. Like there weren't like immediately noticeable changes. Um, so that pretty much stayed the same, which I guess is a good thing, right? You just get into your truck and then you're more or less yeah. continuing the same thing. And, um, yeah, but I would say the experience and then the opportunity to own a truck are the biggest by far, uh, advantages of something like this, of this program. Awesome. Awesome. So if you could go back, you now go tell Tim six months ago or anybody, you know, that's thinking about the program, if you could go back and give some advice or just not even have to be advice. It could just be, you know, words of wisdom type stuff or, uh, things to look out for things to, to capitalize on. Is there, is there anything that you would, you would want, you would do there? Um, probably just, a, again, just a warning about the maintenance. It, it, it takes longer than you want. I mean, no matter what, I mean, it, whether you're at night or, or, you know, just out on the road, it's going to take a while. There's still some lingering inventory shortage. It's a lot better, but, um, so that would be my advice. Hey, prepare for like some maintenance issues to occur and it's going to take a little longer than you want it to take. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, the charges were about what I thought. Um, so it wasn't necessarily more expensive. I mean, I'm running about my maintenance is currently nine cents per mile. Uh, I think nine or 10, something like that. I got to look. Um, but, uh, so it wasn't, um, outlandishly expensive. It just takes a, it just takes a while. Mm-hmm. So that's, that would be the one thing. Just Okay. Be prepared for that one. Yeah guys get into it and they say, okay, well, I'm, I own my truck now. I'm getting paid more. That means I can work less. And that's not, that's not the case. No, that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. It's, it doesn't, that's not what that means. It means you get paid more to, you know, help with the expenses of, of owning your business. And then when you own it outright, then it kind of like, okay. Yeah. And you don't have a $500, $400 to $500 weekly settlement yeah. or, or uh, deduction from your, you know, your truck payment. Now you're looking at, you know, yeah, you throw two thousand dollars into anybody's take home, yeah, in this room or anywhere, they're gonna, they're gonna be. Most people are gonna be very happy. I would say, you know, yeah, you know, two thousand dollars a month is good money for, for most people. Yeah, absolutely, and yeah, I, th- I think that's another thing. Like, if you come into a lease, you don't expect like, oh, I could just, all right, now I can relax. You can't. No, yeah, yeah you got to probably run even harder. Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, and I think that's something. That's where a lot of guys go wrong. I'll just come into it and then, okay, I'm leasing. I'm, uh, or, you know, whatever I'm leasing this thing. Now I can relax and now I can run a little less. 
And not really. You got to run at least just as hard as you were before uh, if you expect to uh, succeed. I guess you could run less and you'd probably make about the same as, you know, a company driver. Yeah. But you don't want to do that. <laughs> you, you don't you want that's not good you need to run harder so it doesn't really relax until you own the tr- vehicle outright and you have like a, a a large amount of savings yeah for maintenance issues so, yeah you know y- you got to run hard yeah i think that's i think that's good advice yeah right there is <laughs> yeah you, you can't take your foot off the the pedal yeah right exactly I mean, that's kind of like literally, double. literally and figuratively. yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> um it, it's gonna be interesting for me to see once you don't have this lease payment mm-hmm. what your numbers are going to look like and right. what your cent per mile is going to look like and sure. things like that. So yeah. It's, it's like a to be continued, like a part two. Yeah, it is. Basically, yeah. <laughs> the next, the next journey, right? For sure. Yeah. You know, again, thank you for your time. Um, I appreciate you, you taking time out of your day. I know you're down for maintenance. Yeah. Um, so. They can find you on YouTube. Yep. You know, trucking the seven C's. Yep. Trucking the seven C's uh, right there. It should pop up as soon as you, soon as you search it so yeah and like we talked about your your spreadsheet that you use throughout the entire videos or all your videos that's there for somebody to use mm-hmm. yep. right that's somebody that's that they can take and and utilize on their own yep. uh they don't have to pay for it nothing like that it's yep. just it's, go ahead and use it look at it i i think it's important to bookkeep yep when you're out on the road Absolutely. and what does your equipment look like to do to this, this bookkeeping? It's just a computer. <laughs> I got it right there, actually. Yeah, yeah just a laptop. Yeah, it's just and a laptop and a Google Excel sheet, and that's it. Yeah. And that's all you need. Awesome. Well, again, appreciate your time. Good luck in your journey. Thank you. Um, I hope that whatever it, you know, direction you go in when it comes to your business, whether it's the next six months or the next six years, it's everything you want it to be, and, and I, I I hope night helped you get uh, started in your journey, and, and we're part of that that journey for, for as long as you're going to do it. Absolutely. You know? Thank you, Freddie, and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, don't mind stopping. Truck's in for maintenance anyway, and um, uh, yeah, thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you.